and beyond the, you know, sort of beyond the tree line were the savages, right? They weren't Christian, they weren't civilized, they went about, they ran about almost naked, and they hunted wild animals, and fornicated and everything else, right? I mean, it's sort of Satan, Satan's den, right? Sounds pretty fun, Sounds pretty great. <laughs> well, that's, maybe that's just me. <laughs> so, for the Christian, to, to civilized Christian society of that era, um, they clearly felt that they were the superior godly society. And, but what happened was that superiority, that qual very quality of civilization in Christianity was also quite stifling, right? We didn't evolve to live I mean, Whoa. we didn't evolve as, as the human animals that we good, are, yeah. social animals that we are, yeah. um, to live in, within the strictures of, of yeah, sort of up. society. And go, go, yeah, go so young knees. men particularly, but young women as well, yeah. were constantly, okay, the frontier was constantly sort of leading young people who went off, drifted Whoa. off to the, the Indians. I mean, the, I mean, the movement, the, the sort of societal Whoa. movement, was I mean it was a trickle, but it was significant constantly towards the tribes. Not and the Indians were never running off to join white society, right? And then there were even weirder cases. Oh. This is you're talking about the people who were kidnapped. Yeah, oh. that was the part that surprised me the most. I was like, okay, I can kind of see the appeal of being off in the woods, free of certain constraints and fornicating. That sounds that's, that's oh, probably a pretty appealing hear? daydream to a pure you know, farmer. Uh, you know, youngest son is yeah. in it, but kidnapped, taken as supposedly slaves who then refused or very unwilling uh, refused to come back to you know, the white society or, or uh, very unwillingly came. I mean, it's just well, in my book Tribe starts with the story of Pontiac's Rebellion in, 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 the, in western Pennsylvania, eastern Ohio. And she Pontiac oh, fought try, try the stand up. Um, colonial powers for years, very effectively, but eventually they sued for peace. And one of the deals was, part of the deal, the main part of the deal, was that he'd give up 200 and some white captives that had been taken from the, uh, from the frontiers. And um, a significant number of the captives did not want to be Good returned job. to their home, to their home. So <laughs> they actually weren't slaves. They weren't slaves. Nice. I mean, the people fought the gentle, best. Gentle, gentle. You got to watch out for the face. To them is that the, the captives who were killed, and some were killed out of revenge for losses that the Indians had taken on the battlefield. But the were killed, you were adopted. And as soon as you were adopted, you were considered absolutely one of the tribe. There was no distinction whatsoever. You were given to a family that had lost someone on the battlefield, and you were the replacement for that person's son and daughter. And these people, I mean, there were two young women who were repatriated because of this peace accord at the Pontiac's Rebellion. And two young women actually managed to escape and make their way back to ah, their adopted uh, families. That's pretty good, son. And this happened I'm over impressed. and over and over again. Um, all the way, as the frontier marched across oh. America, there were constantly these stories of people who were taken by the Indians and didn't want to come home. You and want to stand the up again? that was given was yeah. that it was an egalitarian society. It was not stratified by class, by income, by inherited wealth, by inherited power. Everyone was equal. They were leaders. But they were willing to fall voluntarily, and if you didn't like the leadership style of Chief Pontiac, well, you know, you could you could just take your family and move up Muskegon Creek and move in with your wife's cousin's family with this other group, and so authority was all um, authority was never imposed. Authority was accepted. And that led to a really basic equality in, in Native societies. And, and I should say, as an anthropologist, the sort of hominid groups that we evolved from, that we were for hundreds of thousands of years, all of the evidence that anthropologists, archaeologists have been able to assemble is that they were extremely egalitarian groups. I mean, partly, you can't carry much wealth, right? If you're a mobile nomadic society, how much wealth can you really carry? And it really key in a society that lives in groups of 30 or 50 that is mobile, it's extremely hard to accumulate differences of, of wealth and therefore status. How does that relate to your experiences in war and being subjected to war? Well, I'm soldiers. Uh, I mean, you mentioned the Blitz and so on, but 
How does this relate to, to those experiences? Well, one of the many highlights no, 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 no. is that uh, 